Hi, everyone. It is so lovely to be with you again on the podcast. Now, what is something that's always on the tip of your tongue when you think about your business? Money, right? Today, I'm starting a four-part series called Elevating Your Enterprise, Advanced Strategies for Women in Online Business. And in this episode, which is part one, we're chatting about a topic close to the hearts of every businesswoman, money, money, money. Now, as we are women forging our own paths in our businesses, understanding our finances is not just about crunching numbers. It is about embracing the power that we have to shape our future using those numbers. It's about the dreams that we nurture, the goals that we set, and the financial strategies that turn our dreams into our reality. So join me today as together we explore the financial stepping stones that will lead you to not just run a business, but to create a life that resonates with your deepest aspirations. Every number tells a story and every financial decision is a step towards your beautiful, thriving business future. So it all starts with understanding financial fitness. Financial fitness in business is just like keeping your body healthy. It's all about making sure your business's financial health is in top shape. And to achieve this, we can turn to some really creative and modern methods. And the first is embracing fintech. Fintech, if you're not sure what that is, is simply a short term for financial technology. So all it means is using software and technology to improve and automate your finances. So think of it like having a VA for your business, but for your money. It simplifies your banking. It can help you automatically save money. It can make looking after your finances so much easier and more efficient, which is really good business sense, isn't it? So what this means is simply using apps like Xero or QuickBooks to manage your business finances. And it takes away all the guesswork. You know, when you keep things in your head or you're just using a spreadsheet or you're keeping a box full of receipts, you never truly know exactly where you are in your business, whether you're making a profit, whether you've overspent on things or what your actual financial situation looks like. And that's not good. Using these tools gives you access to look at your exact finances at the flick of a switch. So click, simply by clicking into the app or logging in online to your Zero or QuickBooks, you can see exactly where you are in your business, whether you're meeting your goals, whether you're not, whether you need to improve. So it's really important to do this, take away all the guesswork, keep everything in one place. And that means you can easily keep on top of your money, your expenses your, and your profit margin without any hassle, without any guesswork. And the apps these days are so amazing. They even um, store photos of all of your receipts and automatically upload them into your accounting software, which makes it so super, super easy to keep track of everything. So that is number one, using technology to make your finances as easy as you can. Another way of using technology is digital wallets. And they just simplify things yet again. So digital wallets are simply things like Apple Pay or Google Pay or PayPal. They make your transactions really quick, easy and secure, which is super helpful for both you and your clients. So two really simple ways of using technology to help you in your business. If apps aren't your thing, not everyone loves technology. I'm a bit obsessed with technology and use it wherever possible, but not everyone likes that. A simple way of managing your finances, it's more manual, is just by using a spreadsheet. Jump into Excel, jump into Google Sheets, and you can create a spreadsheet that is really effective. You just got to keep on top of it and keep track of all your expenses all your income and where everything goes. 
some of these even come with templates that they can really do all that complex math for you. So it makes it really easy to see where your money is going. And that can help you make really smart financial decisions in the future. So you can see it at a glance if you're over subscribing to subscriptions, if you're spending too much in a particular area, if you're not spending enough in another area. Marketing is one area people often underspend and it's one of the areas that you should probably focus on spending money if you want to grow and get more clients. So Keeping track of these things using a spreadsheet or using the apps is really super helpful for keeping track of where you're at in your business. Also important is to learn, to educate yourself. I'm often talking about the importance of continuous learning and sometimes the best tool in your finances is knowledge. Investing time to learn about financial management can really pay off big time in your business. All that means is reading up on things, going to some workshops, following a financial management podcast, talking to your accountant, anything where you can get some more information, reading books, keeping on top of things, Googling if you're not sure. Google is a wealth of information as we all know. So you keep learning about your finances. And if something pops up on your P&L that you don't understand, talk to your accountant. Google it, talk to your bookkeeper, find out what it means, because the more informed you are, the more knowledge you have about your money, the better equipped you are to manage it and to make it work for you. Just like our health, keeping on top of your financial health, you need to do regular checkups, just like a physical checkup of your body. All that means is reviewing your finances regularly. It means not just looking at what you earn and spend, but understanding how your business is growing financially and what you can do to keep on the right track. So you want to make sure your business finances are as healthy as possible. I like to keep on top of my finances, if not weekly, because sometimes the weeks run into each other, fortnightly or every two weeks. So every two weeks or every week, Enter those receipts into your spreadsheet or into QuickBooks or, or Zero. Keep them up to date so that you always know exactly where you're at. Sync your bank accounts to those apps so that they're constantly updated. And then it makes it really easy and quick. So you might only have to spend half an hour a week and you're up to date and you know exactly where you're at. And also keep on top of your invoices. So know what has been paid, know what's outstanding and keep a track of serial late payers and your serial on time payers. Reward the clients that pay on time. They're keeping your business going by paying you on time and you're not having to spend extra time in following up outstanding invoices. Whereas the clients that are continuously late are wasting your time. It's taking time away from you doing your core business. Just like we get really busy in our businesses, your clients get busy in theirs as well. So they may not mean to not pay an invoice. It could just have slipped their mind. They may not have set up an auto payment yet. Get your VA to follow those things up for you because that's freeing up your time. It's making the most of your time so you can focus on money generating activities in your business and where possible also have an auto pay facility on your invoices that your clients can opt into. And that means it's saving you time and it's saving them time and you get paid on time, which is going to help your cash flow and your bottom line. So it's really important. This is all part of reviewing your financial health and keeping things as schmick as possible. By doing these few little things, using technology, keeping on top of things, you can really make managing your business's finances less of a problem, more effective. And you're also, importantly, setting the stage for your business to grow and thrive because you can't grow and thrive if you haven't got all of this sorted out and you don't have a nice, clear framework in place 
and some processes to keep things running smoothly without you having to get your fingers in the pie all of the time. Now, another thing to think about in your journey towards financial independence in your business is there are three key pillars that every entrepreneur should be aware of. And think of these pillars as the foundation of a house. They're each equally important and make sure your structure stands strong. The first is savings. Your first pillar is savings. It is the emergency fund for your business. It's the money you set aside for a rainy day because as you know, there's always going to be unexpected expenses. There's going to be late payments from clients. There's going to be clients who drop off. So you've got less of an income for a particular month or two. So you want to have a bit of a savings cushion to help you weather those storms, to help you get through those times so that it's not impacting your business in any way. It's about building that buffer to give you peace of mind and stability to weather those storms so that you're not like the little boat bobbing around on the water and getting swamped with the big waves. You can stay more even keel. Those little ups and downs are not going to affect you. You're going to be confident in your business. You know you've got a a stash of cash behind you to keep the wheels running smoothly. The second pillar is insurance. If you're in business, This is a non-negotiable. You need insurance. It is part of your safety net. Just like health insurance protects you from unexpected medical expenses, business insurance protects your business from a whole variety of risks. Anything from liability claims to property damage to intellectual property, IP issues, So many areas that you need insurance for in your business. And the online world is so very different to the brick and mortar world. So your insurance needs are going to be very specific to the type of online business that you have and the type of advice you give people, the type of data that you store and the way you use data how you manage payments and look after those, you want to make sure you've got the right insurance in place. And this means that when things go wrong, because at one point something will, it means that you won't be left facing a huge financial loss because you don't have the insurance to cover you. Some insurance claims against you could be hundreds of thousands of dollars or more, depending on what the problem is. So, you know, you you want to make sure that you've just got this safety net behind you to make sure that you can sleep easy at night. Now, the third pillar is investments. And a lot of business owners don't think about this. They're very busy building the business, doing the work, making sure that they've got a little financial buffer getting their business out there, focusing on the marketing and the sales, but they don't think about investing. Now, investing is super important because it makes your money work for you. You might have a big stash of cash behind you, which is amazing. But if it's just sitting in a low interest savings account, it's not doing anything for you. You want to grow that money. You want to make it work for you. So for a business, this could mean various things. You need to invest in technology. You need to invest in expanding your product line and diversifying your actual investments that are going to bring you back money. Things like real estate, the stock market, things that can make your investment portfolio more broad and give you some solid assets that are going to future-proof your life as well as your business. The key here is to make strategic decisions about what you invest in that are going to give you really good returns in the long term and help grow your business so that you can stay competitive but also Build an investment outside of your business that is going to continue to work for you, even if you sell the business 
or close it down or move on to something else so that not everything is tied up to the business. Investing outside of the business is really, really smart to give you strong financial health and future-proof your future. Balancing these three pillars is really important too. If you focus too much on one area and neglect the others, it leads to an unstable financial foundation. For example, if you overinvest without having sufficient savings, that can be risky. If you have too much in savings, it might mean that you're missing out on growth opportunities. It's all about finding the right balance for your business. So you want to have a nice mix of where you put your money. So you need to have, like I said, that savings account for the rainy day. You want to have your insurance policy for the other type of rainy day. You also want to have your investments and they need to be spread across a variety of things. The investments need to be in your business and outside of your business to give you that nice, broad, solid footing so that your business can grow and be financially viable long term. Now, just like a building needs maintenance, your financial strategy also needs to be reviewed and adjusted regularly. Maybe every quarter that makes sense in alignment with the financial quarters of the year because market conditions change, your business evolves and what was working for you three months ago might not work for you now. What you were doing yesterday or even last week may not work tomorrow. So regularly reviewing your overall financial structure, those savings, the insurance, your investments, your expenses, your income, everything. Keeping on top of these means that you can jump on an issue, readjust and recalibrate and make whatever adjustments necessary that you need to, to keep as strong as possible in your business. And lastly, seeking professional advice is a really great idea. Financial planning is really complicated. So it's important to get some good help. There's no shame in getting help from experts. A financial advisor or your accountant can give you some really good personalized advice that is specific to your situation and to your unique business. And it can help you make the most of those three pillars I spoke about. So by understanding and effectively managing these three pillars of financial independence, you can build a very strong financial foundation for your business that's going to support growth and withstands the challenges of your entrepreneurial journey to make sure you're safe, to make sure you keep growing, to make sure you've got money for everything you need and importantly, that it's growing and working for you. Now, a simple way to get smart with your finances is to read. Navigating the financial landscape of business can feel a little bit like you're trying to learn a new language. It's all foreign. You've got no idea what anyone is saying, and it can be a little bit confusing. And that's why reading books designed for business owners and entrepreneurs in simple language can be a huge impact in the way you not only view your finances, but how you manage them. It'll give you a really good grasp of all the concepts and some great ideas that are simple to implement in your business that are going to make a huge impact to your bottom line and to you long term. Now, I've made a list of some financial management books that I think are amazing, and they really break down complex concepts into bite-sized, understandable pieces. I'm starting with my absolute favorite. It is the one I talk about all the time and the one I base my own business finances on, and that is Profit First. Transform your business from a cash-eating monster to a money-making machine. It's by Mike Michalowicz, and this book turns traditional accounting on its head. It really is a game changer in your business. And there are even profit first accountants around that you can hook up with 
they can help you set your business up to run on the profit first framework. Traditional accounting calculates profit as what is left over after your expenses. Profit first flips that on its head. So it is the theory that you need to prioritize profit and pay yourself first. Simple, right? It's the method that encourages you to think about your finances differently. And it really does work. It's a very simple strategy. It's very easy to implement. And my goodness, it makes the most high impact on your business finances of any other theology that I've tried in my business. I just love it. So get your hands on Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. It will change your life. Another great book is The Psychology of Money, Timeless Lessons on Wealth, Greed and Happiness. And it's by Morgan Housel, which explores the link between how we think and how we feel about money and how that impacts our wealth. So that's really um, helpful to read. Next on my list is The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Some people call it the Bible of investing. It gives timeless wisdom on the value of investing. And it's a strategy that focuses on long-term sustainable investments instead of aiming for quick wins. And it's really good for entrepreneurs who want to build a lasting business empire that has a very solid financial foundation. Another one is How Finance Works, the HBR Guide to Thinking Smart About the Numbers. And it's by, I don't know how you pronounce this, Miha Desai. And it is for people who don't like numbers. People like me who find numbers intimidating. (laughs) It really makes complex concepts simple. It helps you understand what all the numbers mean, for your business's health and your growth. So it's a good one to read. Another great book is The Personal MBA, Master the Art of Business by Josh Kaufman. Now imagine if you could get an MBA's worth of knowledge without going to the classroom. That's what this book is all about. It's a crash course in business and finance Um, It talks about things from cash flow to the value of your products or services. Another great book to read is called The Alchemy of Finance by George Soros. Reading this book is like having a coffee with one of the world's most successful investors and picking his brain. He shares his unique approach to the market and gives insights that challenge traditional theories and gives a framework to help you with decision making around your finances. Another book is The Valuation, Measuring and Managing the Value of Companies. And this book is by McKinsey and Co. And it helps you navigate economics. It explains why some ways work more quickly than others and what you should avoid. It's really a good guide for just helping you understand the worth of a company, making smart investments and getting the best returns for your money. Each of these books gives you really valuable insights and really practical advice for managing your business finances. And what they'll do is help you to feel more confident making financial decisions because you'll understand things more and you'll know how to look after yourself and your business more, which will lead to greater success and long-term sustainability of your business, which is the goal, isn't it? (laughs) The last thing I'm talking about is a person who is well known for his wisdom around investing. He's been around forever. I don't think anyone has not heard of him. We can learn so much from him. His name is Warren Buffet. Now, when talking about smart investing, his name has stood the test of time. He embodies a philosophy of exercising patience of understanding value and going after long-term growth that any business, regardless of its size, can benefit from. 
what he talks about isn't just restricted to the trading floor, the stock market, which he's well known for. It applies to fundamental business decisions that can affect your business's financial future. So it would be wise for us to take some of Warren Buffet's wisdom to help us create and cultivate a thriving and financially sound business. Talking about Warren Buffet and his wisdom is sort of like, if I can use the analogy of a gardener, a really wonderful gardener who has this magnificent garden full of the most lush trees and flowers and it smells amazing, it looks amazing and it looks fantastic in any season. doesn't matter the season. It's always flourishing because that gardener knows exactly what he's doing. Now, when that gardener goes to the nursery, the plant nursery, and he wants to buy some seeds, he doesn't just pick up the first packet of seeds that he sees, does he? They carefully select specific seeds that are fit for purpose, that will grow steadily over time in the environment they intend to plant them for the purpose they're planting them. And they will make sure that they purchase high quality seeds, not the seeds that are just full of dust and won't germinate properly. He's going to choose seeds that are going to perform. So that is basically what Warren Buffet does. He looks at long-term growth over quick wins. That gardener could get a cheap packet of seeds, throw it in the dirt and then watch these little seedlings come up and think, wow, yes, got my garden. But in a week, two weeks, three weeks, those seeds are most likely going to be dead. They won't have achieved what the gardener wanted because they weren't right. They weren't fit for purpose and he didn't select them carefully. So that's my little gardener's analogy in relation to Warren Buffet. So we need to look at investments that promise long-term growth, not the short-term gains. Now for your business, this means focusing on really sustainable strategies that will build your brand, that will grow your customer base gradually and solidly. You know, you shouldn't be aiming to be an overnight success. Think about every overnight success you've seen in the movies or in music or whatever. They're quite often referred to as the one-hit wonders. They come along, they appear out of nowhere, they knock the socks off everyone, they have one or two major hits and then they just blow off into oblivion and no one ever hears or sees of them again. That's not what you want to aim for. You don't want that for you or for your business. You want to be thinking long term. So focusing on building this lovely financial base, customer base, solid brand, gradually, solidly with purpose, with a really good strategy in place is going to really help solidify your place in the market. It's going to solidify your business for the long term. It's going to make sure that you are working with the right people, that you're delivering great services and products, that you're just delighting everyone on every level, including yourself and your profit margin. Can you see the difference there and why it's important to not get caught up in all the vanity metrics and the instant success markers that people tend to get a little too caught up in? Another thing that Warren Buffet is known for is called value investing. And that involves finding companies that are undervalued by the market, but they have really good solid bones. They have a great structure fundamentally they work now translating this into your business finances means you're going to invest in areas of your business that are going to add long-term value even if they're not the hottest or trendiest choices at the moment they're not those one-hit wonders I just spoke about 
So they're going to give you that levity that you need. One of Warren Buffet's famous quotes, and you may have heard this before, is rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. In business, this translates to being cautious with your investments, ensuring that the risks you take are calculated and that you've got some good plans in place to mitigate potential losses, similar to the having insurance, having the safety net, making good choices, learning about what you're doing before just jumping in and making bad decisions. Warren Buffet is an advocate for strict financial discipline, which means knowing your numbers inside and out. It's about budgeting effectively, cutting unnecessary expenses and making sure every dollar you spend has a clear purpose. When you spend something in your business, a good way to think is what is my return on investment going to be? How many dollars back is this one dollar going to give me? If I'm spending this dollar, is it going to give me a dollar back? Is it going to give me two dollars back or five dollars back? Or is this one dollar going to give me a hundred dollars back? Or is it just going to cost me a dollar? So that's a good way of working out if what you're spending your money on is worth spending your money on. Think about the ROI. And if you do this, you will always spend smartly and you'll always spend on things that are going to help grow your business. Another important thing that he talks about is really understanding what it is that you're investing in. He doesn't just invest in any old thing. He doesn't invest in businesses that he doesn't understand. He knows what they're about. He knows their purpose. He knows their bottom line. He knows all the nitty gritty. Just don't get caught up in complex products or strategies that you just don't understand. If you don't understand them, find out what it is. Talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. Learn, read, research, do whatever it is you need to do so that you know what it's all about. And finally, patience. Patience is key. Patience is a virtue. Building a successful business takes time. All those stories we hear about the overnight success stories, like I keep saying, probably took five years to become an overnight success story. Building a successful business takes time. Anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. Seriously, anyone who tells you building a business is a quick thing or building, I'll be specific here, building a successful business, anyone who tells you that that happens quickly is not being truthful. Building a business takes time, it takes energy, it takes patience, it takes grit and determination, and it's not an overnight thing. It's going to take years to build a successful business. So you've got to be prepared for that and be in it for the long haul. And to build your successful business, it's all about making consistent, wise choices in your overall business structure, but particularly wise financial choices and giving them time to grow, giving those seeds in that garden time to germinate, time to strengthen, time to put down roots, time to grow a strong trunk so that all those little leaves and, and branches can develop and, and grow too. And if it's a fruit tree, so that they can bear beautiful fruit. And this is what Warren Buffet always recommends to do and what he does himself. So it's good advice to follow. Taking control of your business finances is not just about keeping the lights on. It's about steering the ship through the calm and the stormy seas. Remember that little boat I mentioned before? You can either be the little boat that's bobbing around on the waves, getting swished with the massive waves, capsizing and drowning, or you can be the strong ship with the captain firmly in control that just glides through and is not seriously impacted by any obstacles that come up. 
It's really about steering your ship through those waters towards the destination. And what's the destination? The destination is your dreams, the dreams that you are working towards to become your reality. Take hold of your business. Be the leader in your business. Be the leader of your finances. Be the leader of your products, of your services, of your team, of yourself. Take the reins. Set your sights on the horizon and start navigating your business like the leader you are. So we've talked a lot about how to build up the money bank for your business and create a really strong structure, a really strong foundation that is going to grow your business, your clients, your services, and your investments. Your journey is going to be unique. Your business journey, your financial journey, they're both going to be unique. They're intrinsically entwined and they're unique to you. Don't shy away from them. Learn, equip yourself with knowledge. Understand the terrain of your business landscape. And remember that every financial decision you make can move you forwards or it can put you backwards. So it's really important to start small, think big, Begin with small, manageable financial steps. Understand your cash flow. Keep track of your expenses and save wherever you can. And these little steps will lead to financial independence for you and for your business. And what that means is freedom. Financial independence is freedom. And that's one of the reasons we start our businesses So educate yourself, invest in time to learn about your finances, read those books that I mentioned, listen to podcasts, take courses, listen to your accountant, just become financially literate. Knowledge is the compass that is going to guide your financial decisions. Let technology simplify and automate your tasks. Embrace digital solutions. They're all here to make everything smoother for you. Be patient, be persistent. It doesn't happen overnight. So just persevere, have courage to make tough decisions. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day and neither will your financial empire be built in a day. Face your fears and I'm going to leave you with the words of Ariana Huffington. I love that woman. She says, but you have to do what you dream of doing, even while you're afraid. Don't let your fear of numbers keep you from financial success. With each step, each crunch number, and with each dollar that you've invested wisely, you're not building just a business. You're building a legacy for yourself, for your family, and you're building your freedom. So go chase that freedom, grab it, embrace it with both hands. So I hope that you take these insights, embrace the financial aspect of your business with open arms. It's a truly powerful part of your business journey towards creating something that's not just successful, but it's a true reflection of you, and the life that you want to live, the life that you're dreaming of and working towards. So that wraps up our journey today on the Brilliant Business Beautiful Life podcast. Thank you so much for joining me and for being such an integral part of our community of amazing, beautiful, wonderful, trailblazing entrepreneurial women. Remember, the road to financial empowerment is both challenging and rewarding and you're not walking it alone we're all here together so tune in next week as we talk about the exciting world of scaling up your business we've talked about how to build those strong foundations so now we're going to work on those foundations and scale up so we'll explore the secrets of growing your business sustainably ensuring your business is not uh overnight success that's going to fizzle out the next day, but is going to be a lasting beacon of brilliance for the world. So until then, keep building that beautiful business and life you've always dreamed of. Stay brilliant, stay beautiful. I'll see you next time.